you know? <laughs> and he, he just said, son, he said, you got to pull together. And you got to stop doing this stuff. You got to pull together. And I just remember just going, I know, Dad. I know. I just, my hand was down and I was trying not to cry. And, and that's all he said. That's all he said. In Nashville, well, part of that journey was in Nashville. When I moved here in 78 and I'd become a prodigal when I was in 75, it's, it's a crazy story. I've written other books about it, you know, over the years about the gory details of just, I just got deceived. I mean, I've always, if you can have a favorite name, name for the devil, I've always said he's the great deceiver. Yeah. And anybody can go down. I don't care who you are. Mm -hmm. And, but I didn't think I, I didn't think I would, you know, and, I, and it's just, a, it's a crazy story. All my friends who, who were older went to school, went off to college, and then I just, I lost my way. And I thought I could play with the fire and not get burned. And then all of a sudden I'm trapped. I'm literally trapped. And it's the crazy thing is, is because I remember getting high with people and I would be talking about Jesus. Mm. And they'd all go, wow, man, that's really cool. You know, <laughs> I mean, it sounds weird, but I knew that God had a call in my life and mm. I knew that there was a destiny for my life. And so I never could shake that. I never totally just, I never totally disowned him. I was just partying, just doing crazy stuff, you know, making bad choices. Yeah. Cool thing is my mom and dad never condemned me. Mm -hmm. Ever, ever. They never threw me out of the bus. I was always welcome home. I know it hurt my mom and dad. That's what hurt me. And I could tell in their faces mm -hmm. that they were grie They weren't mad. They were, they were grieving for me. So basically, I just continued to sort of spiral, spiral, spiral down. And I'm, I'm in this, I felt like I was in a big pit and there was no ladder to get out. And then I, I had a near drug overdose in 1978. And that's, and I almost lost my life. And that's when I thought, oh my gosh. Lord, do whatever you have to do mm -hmm. to get my attention. Mm -hmm. Car wreck, break my legs, just don't kill me. And I'd say those kind of <laughs> prayers. Oh and I knew my mom and dad were on their knees yeah. every single night for oh. me, if not in the morning as well. And then 1979, November of 79, I had a, I probably had a nervous breakdown. I never went to the doctor, but I ended up on the linoleum floor in my apartment in Nashville and I wept and shook for three and a half hours. Mm -hmm. And at 3.30 in the morning, I just, I, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that Abba was laying on the floor with his arm around me. Mm -hmm. And I haven't been the same since. <laughs> it all changed. But I'm, I'm convinced that it was the prayers of my mom and dad. Yeah. During that, you know, let's say that season of your life where you were making bad choices, you know, a lot of times, people think God shames them, that God wants to be a taskmaster and wants to correct you in a harsh way. But I, I found in the book, the closest thing to harsh that your dad was with you, you write about in the book, where you had a bit of a conversation yeah. out on the front porch of your little house in Kenosha. Canova. Canova. Yeah. And so, um, what was that like? Yeah. Because that's almost a heavenly father-ish <laughs> yeah, kind of, Yeah, it, was, it was tender and I felt awful. You know, I'm, I'm sh I, I felt shame. I felt, I just felt so guilty. And, but it didn't really come from my dad. It was just, I knew I was doing the wrong thing. But yeah, my, my dad came, you know, he came from that generation, you know, there was some really amazing things about that generation. You know, when you were yeah. sick, you went to work. Yeah. Yeah. You, know, you took care of your wife, you took care of your kids, you were involved in your community, uh, you're involved in your church, and you just, you know, he just was a good, good guy, you know. But there were certain things that, of that generation that they didn't want to, like they didn't, you know, we didn't have a lot of talks about sex. Mm -hmm. We didn't talk a lot of talks about, or he was non-confrontational. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but th that, those kind of things, he just didn't, he didn't know what to say, you know, and... Uh, for me, it's a little different. Di it's a different time for me. I've, I've, I've had talks with all my kids about lots of important and deep stuff and where some of my kids were maybe struggling and I just talked to them about it. You know, mm -hmm. my dad had a hard time doing that because mm -hmm. I think he didn't want to push me away. Mm -hmm. He knew I was in trouble. So he, he thought if he said, he, did, he was so careful not to say anything that might make me wander even further. Right. Mm -hmm. But I remember on that front porch, I went out there, he asked me to come out there and I'm sitting and I just knew it was coming, you know? <laughs> and he, he just said, son, he said, you're gonna have to pull together. 
and you've got to stop doing this stuff. You've got to pull together. And I just remember just going, I know, Dad, I know. I just, I was, my head was down, and I was trying not to cry, and, and that's all he said. That's all he said. And then we got walked back in the house. That conversation on the porch mm -hmm. that Paul Smith had with Michael W. Smith is more in line with what God is always saying. Yes. Yeah. Whatever you're dealing with, whatever you think is giving you life in this world isn't. It's really death. It's temporary. Yeah. It's yeah. my goodness to you is what will fulfill you. He's constantly saying those things. Yeah. And that's kind of what you experienced even in your kind of wayward time. Your dad was just calling to you. He didn't want to push you any further. Yeah. And people have the a really weird dynamic about God as this really you know, kind of guy with a hammer, you know, behind his back waiting to knock you on the head with it, you know? know. It's not like that, is it? It's not like that. And, you know, unfortunately, you know, a lot of these people have grown up in really legalistic churches and have, and have brought that sort of theology that I think is detrimental yeah. to people. And, and that's the kind of stuff that makes me, if I get, if, and I never get, I don't get mad very often. I'm, I'm such, so yeah, peaceful. No. <laughs> and, but if I do get upset, it's when people instill uh, lies in people's lives, things like that, yeah. that portray God for some, someone that he's not. Mm -hmm. And because that can destroy a life. The great deceiver. It's the great deceiver. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the reality is, uh, your testimony here today is at your darkest hour, what did what what was the image of God you remember? There with you with his arm around you. Mm -hmm. He yeah. was literally with you. Yeah. That's your story. That's my story. At TBN, our mission is to use every available means to reach as many individuals and families as possible with the life-changing gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you for helping make the gospel of grace go around the world. Without you, we couldn't do it. God bless you.